When I was working on a PhD in American history at BYU, I took a deep dive into one of my four areas was the history of religion in America. And I focused on the second great awakening, which is Joseph Smith's era. And I was astonished at the preachers. They are dead ringers for the 11 preachers in Jacob, Enos, Mosiah, and Alma up to chapter 42. Those 11 preachers sound just like what he would have heard in his own environment when he went to revivals and especially Methodist, which he was somewhat partial to. And you will see the four-step conversion pattern of his era. You will see the same phraseology of the Bible, the King James Bible. You will see frontier rhetoric. You will see the same pattern from A to Z. And you can check this. This is not a theory. Let me give you one example of those 12, King Benjamin. King Benjamin. I found we're one mile from Palmyra on June 6, 1826, a very formative time in Joseph Smith's life. This is in my chapter four, all of this stuff about the 11 preachers. One mile from his home. He said he went as often as he could get there. I think he was at this one, and I'll tell you why. It's in my book, but I'll tell you anyway. He, what the Methodists like to do is to consecrate the ground of a revival area. One mile from Palmyra, June 6, 1826, 15 months before Joseph gets the golden plates. The famous Methodist prelate named Bishop McKendry is going to give his last discourse. And he is weak, and he is feeble, and he is beloved, and he is going to give a talk on personal salvation. And everybody on the ground makes a commitment to Christ except little children. That sound familiar? If it doesn't, I'll keep going. 10,000 people were there. They, the whole Ontario district was coming to honor this sainted man. And they built a little pulpit. And one of the ministers would sit up there by the name of Benjamin G. Paddock is on that stand. And they put the tents around that stand. And he gives this discourse. And people are falling down. They are moved emotionally, just like King Benjamin's speech. We call that the falling exercise in the Great Awakening, Second Great Awakening. And you come away from that, and I found every source I could who touched on that revival of June 6, 1826. And I've got them all documented in there in the book in chapter 4. That's one example of the 11 preachers. Now, they're not all that detailed, but they're following the conversion pattern, the phraseology. Everything is the same. And you come away and say, do I really think that falling exercise happened in ancient America among all that shrubbery <laughs> in ancient America? No. This has come down from the Reformation. And this is what you've got. It is very, very hard to explain that away. And then Benjamin, when he sees a person who's in the falling exercise or emotionally affected, they call that being under conviction. And they bring him up to the altar. That's the little bench in front of the stand. They call it the altar of God. And those are the phrases that are used by Benjamin in the Book of Mormon. And after the thing is over, and they've all made a covenant to Christ, having heard this sainted man, this feeble last discourse, 
They appoint the stations of the preachers, and that phrase is in there too. That is a Methodist term. And yet the people at BYU says he went word for word and translated out of that stone. Well, all right. So that's first and second Nephi. That's Jacob, Enos, Mosiah, Alma 1 through 42. Alma 43 through 63 is the war chapters. 